Merry Holly and Evergreen season, fair friend. It is the season many of us associate with overachieving gifting lists and out of control consumerism, but on this channel we eschew all that in favor of slowing down. Should you find yourself with a desire to bring joy to someone with a gift this season or any other, may I strongly recommend the homemade variety. Such as, say, a set of wonderful, endlessly washable cloth napkins, so that your recipient may never run out of napkins again. So, the inspiration for today's video came from these beautiful cotton or linen napkins that we were given many many years ago and I really really love them. They came from an old lady who passed away and she never used them because they're you know nice cloth napkins but we decided to use them all the time instead and I love them. They're so so nice. They're this nice thick twill weave so they don't soak through straight away. And we have a lot of really positive feedback from friends and family who come to visit who are positively surprised by how easy it is to use cloth napkins as opposed to paper. And I thought I would take that opportunity to make a bunch of cloth napkins for some of those people who have had positive experiences, just sort of to encourage them to give cloth napkins a go. Um, so again, one of the reasons I really like this is the twill weave that makes them a little bit thicker. And so I've gone to my favorite local fabric dealer and gotten this beautiful linen twill weave that I just absolutely love. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, it's just a super, super soft and nice thick linen that I thought would make excellent napkins. To start with, I'll compare the napkins we have and like with the total width of my fabric. This is your standard 140cm or 55 inches wide, and I'll get three nice big napkins out of each width. I'll make the napkins 40cm tall or almost 16 inches plus seam allowance. Next up is pulling thread to ensure I get a crisp straight edge. This linen was especially prone to thread breaking while doing this, so I alternated between pulling thread and cutting the small section I had worked with. After cutting the straight strip off my bolt, I divided my strip into three equal width pieces and repeat for as many napkins as desired. It may be one of the simplest projects in the world, but being able to plan and cut my fabric with zero waste still gives me so much joy. All edges are folded in, an unusually arduous task with this linen, as its thickness and softness has deprived it of linen's typical willingness to accept a fold. Lovers of symmetry will especially appreciate the mitered corner, where a small corner of our napkin is snipped off to reduce bulk before that corner is folded in once. Our sides are then folded as normal and we should be left with a nice symmetrical corner that is easy to stitch down. No sewing machine? No problem! Small projects like these are great for practicing one's hand stitching. I like to insert my thread into the folded edge and fastening it by sewing the same place twice. The edge is then secured with neat hemming stitches. This is not strictly necessary, but hand stitching is so flexible, so I like to stitch up that little mitered corner before going on my merry stitching way. Mm. 
Should you, on the other hand, find yourself in possession of a sewing machine, we can also finish our napkins that way. When doing so, I prefer to pin perpendicular to the sewing direction as I find it much easier to remove my pins ahead as I'm sewing. On the machine, I try to keep my stitches as close to the fold as I can, usually about one millimeter. For the mitered corner, I stitch until I've just barely stitched down both sides before lifting the sewing foot and turning my napkin 90 degrees. The ends left by our machine friend can either be tied off and snipped, or, if you're feeling extra meticulous, sewn into the folded edge before snipping to make it secure and invisible before snipping of ends commences. For the more fancy among us, you may wish to try your hand at some embellishments, such as embroidery. Napkins, being small, quick projects, are ideal candidates for trying out new techniques or practicing one's skill. Here I've found myself some greenish-yellow embroidery floss from my box of colors and pulled out two strands. Patterns can be anything you desire. Monograms, twisting vines, flowers, enthusiasm. Let your imagination run amok. If you make them all different, it'll be easier for people to recognize their own, rather than you being unable to stitch any exactly identical motif twice. Is it perfect? <laughs> Absolutely not. Will it put a smile on the face of my napkin's intended recipient? Most hopefully, and almost certainly. May your dark season be filled with candlelight and laughter. The sun turns soon in the northern hemisphere, and the days will grow lighter again before we know it. Oh, but please don't be of the impression that napkins must be made from new fabric. Just after filming this, I came upon this wonderful linen tablecloth second hand. It made the most wonderful stack of reused zero-waste napkins for another friend. 